Hello everybody and welcome to another one of our leadership training videos. In these leadership training videos, as you know, if you've been following, I essentially lay out different aspects of leadership, which I think are important to consider to build your skills, your knowledge and your abilities. Now, leadership training is so important for us, whether we are seasoned individuals or we're at the very beginning, because they help us understand how to become a leader, how to become a better leader, a more effective leader, but more importantly, how to grow in our leadership. Last time in the previous video, because this is the second part, I spoke about a topic that is so important to us today. It is political as well as obviously social and everything else related to that, but we're focusing on the leadership aspect. And that particular topic is cultural diversity. We'll come on to that in a minute. So my name is Chris Igwe. I have over 35 years experience of growing, training and developing and leading teams across the five major markets I've lived in, but also Europe, Middle East and Africa, where I've had teams that I have managed and led. If you're familiar with these videos, then please feel free to like, to comment and to share. And of course, subscribe to the channel so you know when other videos are coming forward. Cultural diversity. It's become so much of a buzzword today but it's beyond that. As many of you will know, maybe you're in different parts of the world, different cultures. It affects all of us in one way, shape or form. But I just wanna start out with setting the stage as I did last time. So although we're talking about the second part of my elaboration, if you like, of cultural diversity, it's important to start with a framework. And that framework is this defi definition, which I think is, for me anyway, the most appropriate. There are many others that may suit you better. Please feel free to look up what those are. So for me, cultural diversity is about the existence of a variety of cultural or ethnic groups within a society, within businesses and within countries. So the key words there, the variety, cultural or ethnic, and of course, within society, businesses and countries. And I put it to you that Whilst these may be new thoughts and ideas, they've been around us all the time. But I guess as time goes by, we become more familiar with and more involved in and engaged in certain topics of which cultural diversity is one. But how does that break down? Because the thing to know about cultural diversity is that it's complex in its nature. It's complex in how wide and how deep it goes. But this is the tip of the iceberg, but I would say the most important ones for us to consider as we work through this. So it consists of gender. What is the gender? What is the age? We talk about age and the importance of age within our businesses. Obviously it's race, color, sex, or indeed sexual orientation, which is very much topical today. Ethnicity, which is a breakdown of race and color, religion, education, and many other things it could be habits. It could be language as well. It could be dialects within languages and how those different dialects are treated in relation to the more educated versus the less educated or whatever. So these are some of the elements which you will need to consider as you look at your team, your department or your company and see how all that breaks down. So as leaders, I just want to cover briefly what is expected of us because in the leadership role that we have, it's important that we take ownership of how to deal with and face cultural diversity because it's expected of us. So some of the things that I see, and there are many others, you are the guardian of the integrity of your team. And what I mean by that is the ability of the team or department or company to understand the importance and significance of cultural diversity and how, as I'll show you later, it, bec it becomes important. You are there to look at the individual con contribution being made of the team. So as you elicit that knowledge, input and insight, you bear in mind that the individual contributions are so valuable. They are literally gems and nuggets that will come out from the individuals, which will then be brought up by you into the wider team and can help support the business. You are there because it's expected that you will need to be strong. You need to have strength because you'll face challenges. 
there'll be those who within your team or in the department or company will say, well, why should you be focusing on cultural diversity? Why is it important? You may have your back to the wall as you defend and support this idea of diversity. You'll be encouraging people to listen, to listen to each other. And you'll be doing your own listening, which I'll touch on in a minute as well. And therefore, the key through all of this is to leverage diversity because diversity is important. So those are some of the things that are expected of you, which you have to put at the forefront of your approach. So how would you do some of that as a, as a leader? Well, the one thing that I think is really, really important, most of these in here, but educating yourself. You see, what we don't understand, we fear. That's a natural human condition. So the first is educate yourself to understand these other groups, whether it's gender, whether it's race, whether it's color, whether it's country. Travel either to those communities, so they could already exist in your town or city or close to where you are, or they may even be your next door neighbors as well from different nationalities, cultures and backgrounds. But more importantly, countries to travel to. So maybe instead of going to a beach somewhere where you go every year on your own or with the family, why don't you try somewhere that is culturally different, a different part of the globe where you want to understand a bit more about those cultures and the rich heritage that they have. When you've acquired that knowledge through educating yourself and travel, you want to share that knowledge. Share that knowledge within your team, your department, your company, share it with people around you even, maybe not just in business, so that you become more sensitized to the awareness of these different cultures. In that whole process, ask lots of questions. If you have people, which is what this focus is about within your team, ask them questions, understand, try and figure out what it is that they wish to share with you and increase that knowledge by asking questions. And then finally, and one which I think is very powerful is invitation into your home if you feel comfortable or that's the culture and obviously that's over time but you may just want to have coffee or drinks or even a meal with somebody in your team or a group of people maybe your entire team anyway as you may have heard me say before i very much enjoyed each year i would invite my team from throughout europe or wherever we'd have some time at my home and we just hang out barbecue meals chatting Maybe from a cultural diversity point of view, it's not as acute as I'm mentioning here, but we had all sorts of ages. We had men or women, different issues, personal and professional that some had, which some of the team was aware of, but all that helped and it broke the ice where they came and played table tennis or football or just played the piano or whatever it happened to be. So these are some of the tools that you can use and consider to make it more fun, more easy, more enjoyable. because these are the positive outcomes you want to get, because that's what you're looking for. As a leader, it's how can I get the most out of the diversity of my group and build on that? One that's, some of these are straightforward, but we don't always see them. Men, I think, generally speaking, would not always look at a female perspective. It could be that we feel that that is a challenge to our authority, but get a female perspective Let's look at it as a very simple thing, for example. When we travel on vacation, we take our children. Maybe we as men, we've got an idea about how things should be planned and organized. But from our wives or our elder children, they'll give us a better perspective of that. So it's simple, but it's valuably important. It could be that the way you word a report that you do, so you share it with other members of the team, they can understand and pick out things that just don't make sense. Warnings on the pitfalls, that's really important. Again, you leave your ego behind. What could be the problem? Somebody else from a different culture, or indeed you want to pitch or propose or promote whatever that report might be to another part of the business or division, which may be abroad or a different part of the country. You want to get peer reviews. By peer reviews, I mean people at your own level. So it could be that I would go to somebody outside the department Maybe I wouldn't normally deal with them, but it might be important to get their insight. They may be a woman, or they may be from a different culture. How can you get the, the review? Because all this 
distills down into you getting profound thoughts. The moment you open up the airwaves of the previous page that I showed you on deep conversations where thoughts are brought to the forefront, that's great because then it creates greater opportunity for innovation, for innovative ideas, because one of the correlations between cultural diversity is innovation, the increase of innovation and the rapidity of that as well. So as we start to close this, the conclusions which I shared in the previous uh, leadership training video as well is around what are the things that could come out of this? And in fact, it's not could come out because research has demonstrated that if cultural diversity is mixed with a strategic plan and positioning of the company, in other words, it's got to be proactive, you can't just talk about cultural diversity, then there is a correlation between cultural diversity well implemented with increased sales or revenue, increased profitability and increased market share if that's what you're pursuing. So imagine if you were able to bring all these three together, wouldn't that be amazing for your team and your department? So in conclusion, for me, here are the biggest wins where you embrace cultural diversity, improve your leadership skills and knowledge. You can then increase this by learning more about yourself because as a leader, we all have leadership styles that are different, yes. But our own leadership training should be to help us become better people, better human beings and better leaders. Because once you are a better human being by understanding other people, you become a better and more successful leader. You also have the opportunity through this to learn more about others. Learn more from others in different teams, different cultures, different backgrounds, different ethnicity. And you learn more, not just about those individuals, but you know more about the team and the team dynamics, because that's what you want to create. Once you are in a good place, once you feel that you better understand cultural diversity, you can then better understand others in your team, know where they're coming from, why they say one thing or approach things in a different way. Because very often as leaders, isn't, isn't it the case that we hire people who suit our view of the world, but that's the wrong thing to do. In certain instances, great, but a lot of the time you want to hire people who are different from you, who can provide something you don't already have. And then as you grow the team, trust me, the dynamics of the team become so much better because you are the, as I said earlier on, the guardian of the integrity. You are the guardian of the team. So you're the one that brings everybody together under one roof that basically says, guys, cultural diversity is really important. And the more we use it, the more valuable it becomes. The more valuable it becomes, the more people want to join you in your company so that you want to hire them in. You want to create an environment in which people say, I like that team, I like that department, I like the way that person leads their business or their company because they have understood that you are there to be more inclusive and more embracing. So if this video has uh, spoken to you, please feel free to like, comment and share. Love to hear your thoughts as well on cultural diversity because it's a big topic. There is no one single answer, but the key is to be able to move forward progressively in order that such leadership training programs as this can help create awareness, create understanding and create a better working environment for the success of your business. Thank you.